Nyquist, the unbeaten champion, won the Kentucky Derby in impressive style to raise his record to eight for eight. Everybody wants to know, can he win the Preakness? Can he win the Belmont? Can he become the second Triple Crown winner in consecutive years? The Triple Crown is elite. If you win the Triple Crown, you ensure your immortality in racing. Only 12 horses in the history of American racing have won the Triple Crown. Let's take a look back at those 12 horses. We're going to start all the way back in 1919, almost 100 years ago, when Sir Barton, as a maiden, swept the Kentucky Derby Preakness in Belmont. He even won the Withers in there. Now, he was 0 for 6 as a 2-year-old, but as a 3-year-old, he started his year in the Derby. He became a Triple Crown winner even before it really wasn't known as the Triple Crown. 11 years would pass before the next one. In the 1930s and the 1940s, we had no less than seven Triple Crown winners. Now, in 1930, it was the great gallant Fox who became the second winner of the Triple Crown. Still not really known or recognized as the Triple Crown, New York Times called what he was doing the Triple Crown. Like, like some other countries uh, named their biggest three races. So the American Triple Crown was born. 1930, Gallant Fox became the second winner. His son, just five years later, was Omaha. Won the second Triple Crown in its history, and the owner, Bel Air Stud, became the first owner to win two, as Omaha became the third Triple Crown winner. Just two years later, it was the son of Man of War. Now, Man of War never got a chance to win the Triple Crown. Remember, back then, it wasn't known as the Triple Crown. Man of War started his three-year-old season in the Preakness. He easily swept the Preakness, Withers, and Belmont. Probably would have been a Triple Crown winner if he had run in the Derby. But his son, War Admiral, became just the fourth winner in 1937. Perhaps he's best known as a Triple Crown winner, or perhaps he's best known as the upset loser of that famous match race with Seabiscuit. The 40s was a big decade for the Triple Crown. We had Mr. Longtail in 1941. He became the first Triple Crown winner for the trio of Eddie Arcaro on, on board, Ben Jones training, and of course the famous Calumet Farm, the red and blue silks, crimson and blue silks of Calumet Farm, became the first winner for that trio. They did again win the Triple Crown 1948 with the great citation. In between those two, for Arcaro, Jones, and Calumet, we had Count Fleet in 1943. Count Fleet may have been the most dominant. That's going to sound crazy to Secretariat fans, but Count Fleet won the Preakness by eight lengths. He won the Belmont Stakes by 25 lengths on his way to his Triple Crown in 1943. A few years later, a horse fold in Texas, Assault, the club-footed Comet. He was known for, well, bad feet. He, he stepped on a stake when he was a younger horse and had a clubbed foot, but that did not stop Assault from coming, becoming just the eighth winner at the Triple Crown. That was 1946. Two years later was Citation, again for Jones, Arcaro, and Calumet Farm collecting their second Triple Crown winner, Citation. Many people consider one of the three greatest horses of all time, along with Man of War. And the next horse I'm going to talk about, that Secretariat. After a 25-year gap, yes, people were wondering if the Triple Crown would ever be won again. Then came along Secretariat. He beat Sham in the Kentucky Derby uh, stakes record time. He beat Sham in the Preakness stakes record time. In the Belmont, they went head and head in crazy fast fractions, and Secretariat just kept on going as Sham fell away. Eventually, Secretariat crushed the track record at Belmont Park, running 224, crossing the wire 31 lengths in front. Secretariat, the most famous of all Triple Crown winners. The 70s became another big decade, though, for Triple Crown winners. As just four years after Secretariat, we had the bargain basement horse. Seattle Slough was purchased for $17,500. He went on to be the first undefeated horse to win the Triple Crown. So Nyquist is chasing Seattle Slough in this way. Seattle Slough did not lose a race until after he swept the Triple Crown. One year, just one year after that, was maybe the greatest rivalry in American racing affirmed Alidar, Alidar affirmed when they got to Louisville for the Kentucky Derby in 1978, Alidar was actually the favorite. The East Coast horse was favored over affirmed. Affirmed beat Alidar in, of course, the Derby, the Preakness, and the Belmont. He became the 11th Triple Crown winner, and then we had an even bigger gap 
than we did before Secretariat. 37 years would pass. You all know what happened last year, 2015, American Pharaoh, after a rather uh, interesting Kentucky Derby where he had to really push it in the stretch. He dominated the Preakness in the slop, and then he dominated the Belmont Stakes to become the 2015, the 12th Triple Crown winner in our history. Now, in that gap between 1978 and 2015, 37 long years without a Triple Crown winner, we had no less than 13 horses who won the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness. Among them was the great spe spectacular bid who came along just one year after affirmed. And it, the list went on all the way to 2014 where California Chrome, our horse of the year, won the Derby and Preakness before losing the Belmont. So 13 times before American Pharaoh, the Triple Crown was two thirds of the way home without success in the Belmont. Can Nyquist move one step closer tomorrow in the Preakness? I think so. Looks like he's got a great shot. Exaggerator is his main threat. And then we'll be talking Triple Crown for the next three weeks when we'll get together June 11, Belmont Park, to see if Nyquist can become the 13th Triple Crown winner in American racing history. This has been Brian Zipsy with Horse Racing Nation. I hope you like this look back at the Triple Crown.